Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at two frames. They're basically freestyle frames here, one from Akon and one from Eosheen. Now I did use the Eosheen frame here, as you can tell in my Eosheen Wizard HV. It's no longer an Eosheen Wizard HV other than the frame because this has gotten a complete makeover here. And uh, I'll have the link to the video possibly down below or just look at Eosheen HV. Uh, rebuild. So I rebuilt this one. It's a really nice frame, super heavy. And there's a couple features that I really do like about this, which we're going to cover in this video. However, now we're going to take a look at the Acon first. Now, this is a pretty interesting frame. It is somewhat expensive, but I don't blame them for the reason why it's expensive. And I can totally see why it would be expensive to make. For example, if you take a look at the front plate here, this is all carbon, which is really rare. I mean, this is an old carbon frame, but that's not what I mean. What's really rare is to have such a front plate like this. Look at this. This is pretty crazy. It's really massive. So something of this nature is really expensive, especially once you go above four millimeter carbon fiber, it gets pretty expensive. And they're using really great quality carbon fiber. The cuts are clean. Everything is chamfered. They have taken their sweet ass time cutting this and the cutting profiles seem to be pretty good. If you take a look inside, you can see the CNC machine, how it uh, removed some of that to enable you to place your camera inside, but at the same time keeping all the uh, as much carbon as possible to keep the rigidity of the whole frame pretty strong. Now the biggest drawback to this, in my opinion, and I really am disappointed because I would have really loved to build this, is the way that the upper plate is mounted into place. Now, as you can tell right there, what, what they're using is you're using nuts that go into these slots and then you just tighten them up. It's not really a big issue, but where it becomes a big issue is when you're on the field and you're trying to debug something or something will happen that will make you want to remove the upper plate. And by doing so, you run a very big risk of dropping one of these. Now, if you're in a field, this is a nightmare if you drop a nut and you have to look for it. And uh, this is one of the biggest drawbacks, in my opinion. Now, I don't know how much structural integrity these also add, but there is also standoffs in here. The overall design is a really nice design but I do wish they've done a couple things differently. I would have I would have not minded if they used some sort of just an aluminum standoff that does this and doesn't need to be that big and maybe a larger upper plate here and standoffs instead of these uh, crappy nuts, to be honest. And I do apologize for that, but they, I really don't like these and I, I don't see them as very useful or functional in the field, especially. But the overall design, is it's it's really nice. It's It's kind of a novelty in a way because we don't really get to see frames that go to this extent in carbon fiber. Now I'm not really a big fan of the whole design uh, on this one. Uh, I do like the diatones design on them, but what this adds is it adds a really nice protection layer. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, right here when I was putting in the screws to mount the arms, this paint adds an extra layer. So when I put in the screw, screws, it's a bit tough. It's not really tough, but when I was smacking it in, I noticed I was actually smacking the frame a couple times pretty hard because I slipped, but there's no damage, which is really nice in that perspective. However, I, just the color and the design of this, I just don't think it's really useful. So I don't know what you were thinking, Ish, and you could have come up with a really nice design instead that would have gave it um, a little more flair. Talking about this frame, I have been using this frame, and it is a really nice freestyle frame. However, it is really, really heavy. At least this one. This one has four 30 by 30 boards in it. So it's, it's, it's a really heavy one. But what I really, really like about this frame is the fact that it's a low rider, so it's really low, and it can take two stacks. What do you mean by two stacks? Well, it could take... 30 by 30 stacks here, and even 30 by 30 stacks in the back here. He has mounting holes for him, as you can see that right there, which is really nice. And that is one of <laughs> the biggest reasons why I like it. Um, as you can tell, I've done that here already. So here we have like a VTX, and I think, I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know what the hell I put in this, I actually forgot. Oh, yeah, this is running the Fox here mix here, and it has the VTX, and we have all-in-one flight controller. And we have the T-Motor F55 Amp V1 uh, 6S ESCs. I've gotten in a couple crashes, nothing too major where I can say, yeah, they're pretty strong. Uh, because if you can, you know, take a closer look, you'll see that I'm just flying through grass and stuff. So those don't really count as really hard crashes. But the weight of it is kind of scary. It's, it's really heavy. If I throw this at someone, I'd knock them out possibly. So I'll have a link to these two frames down below. I haven't done a frame review in a while. This one's really interesting. Um, if anyone's used it, let us know down in the comment section. And also let us know your thoughts on the Eoshin Wizard HV. So 
um, the frame. You don't have to, yeah, the design, you could talk about the design also. So I'm very curious to hear your thoughts if you used any of these. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.